Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana. I'm Reverend Larry Marie Heil, the spiritual director here. And we are a group of radically inclusive spiritual renegades, healing hearts and creating community. And each of us is consciously embracing conscious spiritual living. Our topic for today is play so I hope you stay with us as we unfold into this series of learning how to chop wood and carry water as we play. And don't worry if you're joining us for the first time. Each week is independent and all previous weeks are out on our website. So let's begin with prayer. Hmm. We just take a deep nourishing breath and recognize that God is total love. And a God of total love is filled with laughter and happiness and joy. And all that the divine is lives right within each of us. That happiness, that joy, that love. What I know to be the absolute truth is that each of us are here today by divine appointment. And there is something about play that we are learning today, be it in the message or the music or in the reading, in a quote, that we are here to learn to play more in our lives. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the knowing that right where we are, God is, that God of love, of laughter, of joy. Hmm. And so I just release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing that God always says yes. We ask, it's answered. Hmm. So I can just know that these words are spoken and answered, that God has said yes. I can say amen, and we can affirm it together. And so it is. We are so blessed to have Gary Lynn Floyd with us today, doing the music, and this first song is just delightful. It's called, I Sing My Love. Good morning, Center for Spiritual Living, Southeast Louisiana. Gary Lynn Floyd, it's great to be back with you. Let's play a little this morning, how about that? This is one you probably are familiar with. Sing it with me, we got a special part. I sing my love, I sing my love. I sing my love into the world. Sing it with me now. I sing my love. I sing my love. I sing my love into the world. I sing my love. I sing my love. I sing my love into the world. I sing my love. I sing my love. I sing my love into the world. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, I dance my joy, I dance my joy, I dance my joy to the world, yeah, I dance my joy, I dance my joy. I dance my joy to the world. I dance my joy. I dance my joy. I dance my joy to the world. I dance my joy. I dance my joy. I dance my joy to the world. Sing it with me. Oh, that's the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like it. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like it. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. Sing my love, I sing my love, I sing my love, 
I sing my love into the world. I sing my love. I sing my love. I sing my love into the world. I sing my love. I sing my love. I sing my love into the world. Yeah. I sing my love. I sing my love. I sing my love into the world one more time. Oh, that's the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like it. Uh huh. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh. I sing my love, I sing my love, I sing my love to the world. I sing my love, I sing my love, I sing my love to the world. So this is our time for celebration and healing. Our time in our service where we celebrate life and we pray for people who desire prayer. We begin with celebration. So I invite you to say aloud so that the whole universe can hear it. Any event in your life for which you're grateful and joyful this week. And now we turn to the healing portion of our service. We're a community steeped in healing. So we pause now to pray for anyone who's not feeling the joy of life that we perhaps were just feeling. They're not feeling maybe that they have things to celebrate. And I truly love this part of our service because it's so in alignment with who we are. So let's pray. God is all there is. God is that love and that peace and ease and grace and freedom and so much more. And as an individual expression of the divine, each of us have within us all of these qualities of spirit. They're available to us right here and right now. And what I know to be the truth is that there are people on this planet right now that aren't embracing those qualities. So we stop for a moment and we create a circle of love. And in this community, we place in that circle of love anyone that we recognize within ourselves or for someone else that might need prayer. So I'm gonna pause and I just invite you to say aloud the names of all of those people that you wanna include in our circle of love. I know that God is right where each of us happens to be, right here and right now, moving in through and as each of us. And I know that the divine has heard every name that we spoke, either in our hearts or aloud. And what I'd like you to do now is pause again, and from your heart to all of theirs, just send out love, knowing that the divine knows exactly how to distribute it. And what I know to be the truth is that anything that needs to be released within each of these people is being released now, be it disease of the mind, of the body, of the soul. I know that anything that's seeking to come forth and be lifted up can be lifted up. And that this release and this lifting up is healing whatever's called to be healed. I know that each of these people is feeling more deeply their connection with the divine right now. I have evidence of that, and I know it to be the truth for everyone that we place in our circle. So I'm so grateful to know that the God without is the God within me. The God without is the God within every person in our circle, every person in this community, and every person on this planet. And I'm grateful for that power of community prayer and what it means to the uplifting of the people on this planet. So it's from all that gratitude that I release this prayer into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Because I know that the divine 
in all of its wisdom has already called all of this good. Any heavy lifting that needs to be done to heal whatever needs to be healed, the divine is already taken care of. So I can just know it's already done, say amen, and together we can affirm it. And so it is. I invite you to join me for our community affirmation. My life's purpose is already within me, and I am committed to its unfoldment. I am here by divine appointment to join in a community that cares for one another, to be in a place that transforms people's lives, to remember the highest truth about myself, to learn spiritual tools for personal transformation, and thus to make the world a more joyful place. So this is our time for meditation. So I invite you to just let go of anything that's been showing up in your life up until now. Forget the past for the moment. Let go of any thoughts of the future and just settle into this moment right here and right now. I'm grateful for this song that Gary has played for us today. It's called, Oh Great Spirit. Oh Great Spirit of love Giving freely, refusing none. Oh, great spirit of love, eternal goodness flows like a flood. Love is all, all is love. Join us in singing. The music of one in all, all in one, no greater blessing neath moon or sun. I know that wherever I am, God is there. In my life, when I play, when I laugh, when I see joy and love. The mystical marriage is the marriage of the soul and the spirit. And I keep a careful watch to keep myself uplifted through love and through joy. I take this time now to sit with the great spirit of love, recognizing the eternal goodness the love that enfolds me. And in this time of meditation, I tune my mind into the divine and draw into my soul that eternal goodness. I listen as spirit speaks to me and I open my heart to know how to find play in my life, how to find laughter and joy. And I receive the blessing of this special time I have with the great spirit of love.
And as we return from this meditation, we just thank Spirit. Bring back with us that special conversation, anchoring it so that we might access it later in the week, later in the day, knowing that that eternal goodness is moving through us, as us, and in us every minute of every day. Oh, great spirit of love, giving freely, refusing none. Oh, great spirit of love, eternal goodness flows like a flood. Love is all, all is love. Join us in singing the music of one in all, all in one. No greater blessing neath moon. No greater blessing, oh, great spirit, neath moon or sun. I'm Gloria Nye, and I'm reading from Chop Wood, Carry Water, A Guide to Finding Spiritual Fulfillment in Everyday Life. Chapter 8, Play. Long Chen Pa said, Since everything is but an apparition, perfect in being what it is, having nothing to do with good or bad, acceptance or rejection, one may well burst out in laughter. In Golf in the Kingdom, Mike Murphy writes, It cannot be argued that golf was the first human game played on another planetary body. Those two shots Alan Shepard hit have brought a certain stature and gleam to the eye of golfers the world over. Golf on the moon. Had NASA put him up to it for public relations reasons? Maybe they wanted some humor in the enterprise or the backing of certain rich and powerful golfing senators. Or could it simply be that all his golfers' passion to hit the ball a mile now had a chance to express itself? Indeed, the chance of a lifetime, the chance of history. Indeed, the cry came down from space. It's sailing for miles and miles and miles. Alan Shepard was giving the mad cry of golfers the world over who want to put a ball in orbit and reassume their godlike power. Apparently, the impulse to play can burst forth anywhere, even on the moon. Play is something that unites adults and kids, opposite sexes, different races. In fact, it binds humans and animals together. It is at this inner species level that playfulness deepens gracefully into an act of communication. When a dolphin and a human play together, they also talk. From the divine play of the universe, which the Hindus called Leela, to the innocent self-absorbing play of the child and puppy, Play is something wonderfully free and aimless, the spark that makes life worth living. As Plato once said, life must be lived as play, playing certain games, making sacrifices, singing and dancing, and then a man will be able to propitiate the gods. A sense of humor is one of the most important qualities of the truly spiritual person. A sense of humor is the result of a true sense of proportion. It's the opposite of self-importance. Real sages, for example, have a certain childlike character, and more often than not, their eyes are full of laughter. This is another of Gary's great songs that leads us into the message. It's called, Lead Me Where I'm Led. Stable and secure 
I surround myself with joy. Take care of my well-being. Cosmic vibes have got me singing. I'm stable and secure. I am stable and secure. I surround myself with joy. Take care of my well-being. Cosmic vibes have got me singing. I'm stable and secure. From the soles of my feet to the top of my head. Yeah. When the flow is complete, I will go where I'm led. Lead me where I'm led. Lead me where I'm led. Karen says, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Eddie says, I am the place where God shows up. Jamie says, love is my religion. Helps me make my own decision to be stable and secure. From the soles of my feet to the top of my head. Yeah. When the flow is complete, I will go where I am. Lead me where I led. Lead me where I led. Lead me where I led. I'm stable and secure. I surround myself with joy. I take care of my well being. Cosmic vibes have got me singing. I'm stable and secure. Karen says, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Eddie says, I am the place where God shows up. And Jamie says, love is my religion. Helps me make my own decision to be stable and secure. From the soles of my feet to the top of my head. When the flow is complete, I will go where I'm led. Lead me where I'm led. Yeah. Lead me where I'm led. 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 I want to thank Gary Lynn Floyd for the fabulous music today and Gloria and I for reading. We are on week seven of our 12 week series on Chopwood Carry Water. It's a book by Rick Fields. And don't worry if you've missed them, each week is independent. And the good news is that all of the previous weeks are out on our website at cslsoutheastla.org. So today we're talking about something we often forget to do in our lives, and I think some people might even say is frivolous or a waste of time, and that's play. I'm happy you've joined us today on this journey to enlightenment because we're looking today at how we can chop wood and carry water while playing. Today we're discussing how play is important in your spirituality and how cooperating and competition are both essential for our growth and how you might play the game of life with more laughter and joy. Imagine the ease of life if we each remembered to take time to play and to really enjoy our lives like little kids do and truly embrace these words of Abraham Maslow. Almost all creativity involves purposeful play. But let's begin with your question of the week. What is the one choice that you can make today to find more time to play, to practice laughing more often, 
and to play the inner game with concentration. One more time. What is the one choice you can make today to find more time to play, to practice laughing more often, and to play the inner game with concentration? So last week I asked you if you had ever truly thought about your relationship with money. And so this week I'd like to ask you a similar question. Have you ever thought about your relationship with playing? Do you see playing as a frivolous waste of time, as a time eater? Or do you recognize the many benefits that play has to offer us all as adults? There's truly a lot to be said for that old saying, all work and no play make Jack a dull boy, or Jill a dull girl for that matter. Many of us, myself included, sometimes focus so much on our work and our family commitments that we fail to take time for fun. Somewhere along the way, we stopped playing. And of course, we might take some time that's leisure time in front of the TV or play a computer game. But what about truly playing? Doing something that's childlike or what we might call goofing off. There's a poem of Sasaka Roshi, who's a Zen master in Los Angeles, and it goes this way. As a butterfly lost in flowers, as a child fondling mother's breast, as a bird settles on the tree, for 66 years of this world, I have played with God. Well, for me, it's more than 66, or perhaps less than 66 if you eliminate all the years that I didn't take time to play or value it that much. I decided to research the benefits of play and found a lot of information on the benefits of playing for children. But what about us adults? Is it not just as important as adults that we continue to build our imagination and creativity? I did locate a site that documented the many benefits of adults taking time to play. And since play is my 2022 word for the year, I was happy to hear that the Wellbeing and Happiness Help Guide says this. Playing with your romantic partner, friends, co-workers, pets, and children is a sure and fun way to fuel your imagination, creativity, problem-solving abilities, and emotional well-being. Adult play is a time to forget about work and commitments and to be social in an unstructured, creative way. That same guide tells us that our play need not have any point to it beyond having fun and enjoying ourselves. And when we play with that joyful abandon of a child, there are actually many health benefits, especially when we play with another person or with a pet and away from those sensory overload of electronic gadgets. So let me name a few of those benefits. Play helps relieve stress because play triggers the release of endorphins and can even temporarily relieve pain. Play helps improve brain functions. Puzzles, chess, and fun activities that challenge the brain help prevent memory problems and improve brain function. Play helps stimulate the mind and boost creativity. It's not just children who learn best when they're playing. The principle applies to adults as well. We learn tasks better when they're fun and in a relaxed and playful mood. Play stimulates your imagination and helps you adapt and solve problems. And play helps improve relationships and your connection to others. Sharing laughter and fun can foster empathy, compassion, trust, 
and intimacy with others. The really good news to me was play doesn't have to include a specific activity. It can also be a state of mind, a playful nature, which can loosen up stressful situations, can break the ice with strangers, can help you make new friends or form new business relationships. And believe it or not, play helps keep you feeling young and energetic. I know when I play with little kids that part of me feels really young again. And it takes a lot of energy to keep up with those little ones, or with teenagers for that matter. Have you ever noticed how much energy it takes to roll around on the floor with a baby? And in addition to boosting your energy and your vitality, play improves your resistance to disease, helping you function at your best. And while we're on the subject of benefits of play, it's not just beneficial in your own life, it's also good for relationships and for work situations. Did you know that play is one of the most effective tools for keeping relationships fresh and exciting? Playing together brings joy and vitality and resilience into the relationship and can also heal resentments and disagreements and hurts. Through regular play, we learn to trust one another and feel safe. And as far as play at work goes, success at work doesn't depend on the amount of time you work. It depends upon the quality of your work. And the quality of your work is highly dependent on your well-being. Many a dot-com company has recognized the link between productivity and a fun work environment. Some encourage play and creativity by offering art or yoga classes, by throwing regular parties, by providing games such as foosball or ping pong, or encouraging recess-like breaks during the workday for employees so that they can play and let off some steam. In the early 90s, I worked for a company that had a full gym and they brought in teachers during the day for classes like jazzercise. These companies discovered that play at work results in more productivity, higher job satisfaction, greater workplace morale, and a decrease in staff turnover and in employees skipping work. So how do we learn to play more and to develop our playful side? George Bernard Shaw once said, we don't stop playing because we grow old, we grow old because we stop playing. Now, I have no intention of growing old because I don't play. And it's never too late to develop your playful and humorous side. If you want to stay young, try to clear your schedule for an afternoon or evening every week. And turn off your phone, turn off your TV and your computers and all those other devices and give yourself permission to do whatever you feel like doing during that time. Be spontaneous. Set aside your inhibitions and try something fun, maybe even something that you used to do as a kid. Enjoy that change of pace. Today is my son's birthday. If he were still on the planet, he'd be turning 47. And one thing I'm certain of, he would still be playing. I'm not surprised at the coincidence that today's topic is play because he knew how to play and to have fun in life. He was a walking example of remembering to play. I love watching him sit on the floor with his son and play with toys. He also taught his son Hunter to play chess and more intellectual games. But the vision of he and my son-in-law Mike playing with Hunter on the living room floor and driving cars all around is one of my most happy memories. It's one I truly savor. And wow, could he make me belly laugh better than anybody I know. 
That is when he wasn't giving me more gray hairs with more of his dangerous playful adventures. And speaking of laughter, Sasaki Roshi was once asked why he came to America. And his response was, I have come to teach people to laugh. And true to his word, he advised his students to start the day by standing straight up and laughing out loud from deep in the belly. This practice, he said, was equal to many hours of Sazen, which is a sitting meditative practice meant to give insight into the true nature of your being. So in the spirit of play and spiritual practice, even if you feel silly, I'm going to invite you to laugh with me right now. Just try it. <laughs> better. I know I do. The power of laughter is really interesting, isn't it? Other master teachers have given students similar advice. For example, Rajni said, laughter is tremendously healthy. Playfulness is as sacred as any prayer, or maybe more sacred than any prayer, because playfulness, laughter, singing, Dancing will relax you, and the truth is only possible in a relaxed state of being. Long ago, I recognized for myself that truth shows up when I am rested and during those quiet times like meditation. If, like Rajneesh, nice, we truly believe that truth comes through when we are in a relaxed state of being, then let's learn to be playful and laugh more often. And as you heard in the reading, Long Shin Pa, a Tibetan yogi said, since everything is but an apparition, perfect in being what it is, having nothing to do with good or bad, acceptance or rejection, one may well burst out in laughter. The world is sometimes a laughable place, is it not? And there's so many places that we could use more laughter. There's a great story about Mary Rose Wood. And a delivery driver knocked on her door when he heard her laughing in the rain. The doors to the garden were open right next to her actual little apartment. And the sound of laughter had come from there. She was just entering the building, waving a cheerful goodbye to someone from under her bright orange umbrella. Ah, I made it just in time, it seems, she said, and walked in, leaning on her cane. I had her lunch in my trolley and waited for her to open the door. There you go, she said, and opened the door. You may put the food on the kitchen table. I'll warm it up in the microwave later. I took her meal and carried it indoors. The route to her small kitchen took me through her living room. As before, I couldn't help glancing at the pictures on her living room walls. Other people living in the old folks home had traditional landscape paintings or religious pictures on their walls, but not Mrs. Rosewood. Her walls were filled with pictures of comedians, the Marx Brothers, Laurel and Hardy, Jim Carrey, Leslie Nielsen, Steve Martin, Goldie Hawn. You're looking at my pictures, I see, she said, cheerful voice coming from behind him. Well, yes. Can I ask you why you have them there? Isn't it obvious? I like to laugh. Look here, she said, and she opened up a cupboard next to her television. He saw films, dozens of them. All comedies. No Casablanca, no Gone with the Wind, only comedies. Now that's a bit unexpected, he said. It's a hobby of yours? Comedies, I mean? Not a hobby, but a way of life, young man, she said. I did not know what to say. 
She turned to push the window open and laughed. And again, I heard her laugh during the rain. I had very serious parents, she said, very religious. I was taught ever since I was a child in life that life was dire business and useless laughter took you nowhere. Nowhere good, that is. Unfortunate for them, I did not believe, and she laughed. When I was a teenager, I became acquainted with our neighbors. She used to be a nun. Used to, said the guy, that sounds interesting. Yes, a bit like Maria in The Sound of Music, Mrs. Rowe Wood smiled. I asked why she was no longer a nun, and she said it was too gloomy. I talked with her, and she knew what my parents thought about laughter and being happy. And one day, she started talking to me about laughter. Mary, tell me how you feel when you laugh. I told her I felt happy. And how do you feel when you are totally loved? Totally. I wondered how she could know that I was so much in love, up to my ears in love with someone, but I answered that I felt happy. And have you heard someone say God is total love? Well, that was easy. I'd heard that all my life, many, many times. Well, tell me then, she said, if someone is total love, totally made of love, how would he feel? Happy, of course. What do happy people do? They laugh. So if God is total love, you might expect God laughs a lot. Why then would laughter be bad, she asked. Now here was a question I had not thought about before. And tell me, Mary, why would it not work the other way around too? Mrs. Rosewood turned into her kitchen and left me standing there. I waited for a short while and then I just had to ask. What did she mean by that? And again, I heard her laughter. In the rain, a blackbird was singing beautifully. I thought you'd never ask, she said. So I'll tell you what she said. Dwelling in negative thinking and complaining about things are just ways to tell you don't trust life can be good. In other words, you're stating your distrust to your creator. So think about it in such a way that you may search for happiness and laughter purposefully. It gets you closer to God, who is laughter, joy, and happiness. Now she used the word God, but if you're happier with some other term, no problem. She meant the creating force of the universe. Mrs. Rosewood said, have to be careful with other people and their faith. Oh, it's quite all right, I said. God is good. Yes, indeed, she smiled. But that's when I started to find laughter on purpose. My parents did not approve and told me so. I was a stubborn enough to continue. I bought funny books. I went to see funny movies. I wrote down the best jokes I found. And this week... Oh, this is so much fun. I found out there's such a thing as laughter yoga. I'm going to try it next week. Yoga at your age, I started. Oh, it's just laughter. Laughter on purpose. No one needs to bend themselves into a knot, she said. And laughed. And time has taught me I took the right road. I met my husband at a movie theater when I went to see Goldie Hawn movie, not to mention other friends I met through laughter. She bent towards me. You see, I'm following the advice of that neighbor. I inherited that cross-stitch picture from her. I looked at the picture above the TV. It said, the purpose of life is joy. She gave it to me shortly before it was her time to go to her maker and said, look at this and remember it. Always try to be the sound of laughter in the rain. Life is so hard for so many people 
It is like an eternal, continuing, rainy day. They're not happy. So you be happy. Show them the way. Be the laughter in the rain for them. Be as happy as you can. Only then can you spread happiness to others. Even though 20 years have passed since that rainy day, I always remember Mrs. Mary Rosewood. We became good friends and she often invited me to watch funny movies with her. I met many of her friends and we spent many a laughter-filled evening together. There was a lot of laughter in the rain and in the sunshine. When Mrs. Rosewood died, she donated all her money to a local theater with the instruction that the money be used to produce one comedy play per year. And guess what the first play was? Laughter in the Rain. To me, she gave all her funny pictures of her funny people. I still have them hanging on my study walls, all faded with time, of course, but just as valuable as ever. Their smiles haven't faded at all. And when I look at the cross-stitch message, the purpose of life is joy, I always remember the time I heard her laughter in the rain. And to honor her life's work of bringing joy to the people around her, I try to be the sound of laughter in the rain to others as well. I love that story because it reminds me of the power of laughter, of the power of positive thinking, and of the total love that exists when people know how to play and laugh. In Science of Mind magazine, Ernest Holmes wrote this. This is the attitude we should assume, that life holds nothing against us. It desires only our good. It wants us to be well, happy and successful, but it wants us to play the game of life the way it is supposed to be played, in unity and cooperation with others. I, for one, am happy that Mary Rosewood did not listen to her parents. And of course, you know, I would love to have that cross stitch that says, the purpose of life is joy. Definitely my kind of picture. Tim Galway, who wrote The Inner Game of Tennis, said that every game we play is comprised of two parts, an outer game and an inner game. That is true of the game of life as well, in which the outer game competition spurs us on to do our best. But it's the inner game which turns out to be the most difficult one. So how do we play the inner game and make life a spiritual practice. Here's a few tips. Make laughter your catalyst. If you have trouble remembering to play, notice when you hear someone laugh and make that the catalyst for you to take some time to play, either then or within a short period of time. Use playgrounds as reminders. The next time you see a playground or a swing set, remember that all of life is a playground. It's up to you to choose to play. And make play cooperative. When you participate in a game, vow to make the play more cooperative and less competitive. And surround yourself with playful people. Let others be your teachers and give in to your playful side. Remember, the purpose of life is joy. So enjoy life. I want to end with one of my favorite quotes by Florence Shovel Sheen, who in The Game of Life and How to Play It, wrote this. In the 23rd Psalm, we read, He restoreth my soul. This means that the subconscious mind, or soul, must be restored with the right ideas. And the mystical marriage is the marriage of the soul and the spirit, or the subconscious and the superconscious mind. How better to restore our soul than to remind ourselves in the game of life that both the outer and inner games are important. 
And the inner game requires us to pause and play with God, as Sasaki Roshi suggested, so that we might fully and creatively enter into that mystical marriage of the soul and the spirit. So in summary, decide what it is you want your relationship with play to be. And remember, find time to play. Play relieves stress, it enhances relationship, it increases productivity, it boosts creativity. And practice laughing more often. Laugh in the rain, laugh at yourself or by yourself. The purpose of life is joy. Play the inner game with concentration. Use laughter in playgrounds to remind you to play and enter into that mystical marriage of the soul and the spirit. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it that I so easily and willingly make the choice today to find more time to play, to practice laughing more often and to play the inner game with concentration. So your challenge for the week is to play more, to surround yourself with playful people, to notice stress and relieve it with laughter and make laughter and play a spiritual practice. Remember those words of Abraham Maslow, almost all creativity involves purposeful play. Let's pray. We take a deep nourishing breath and we just recognize that God that is total love, that God that knows that laughter and happiness and joy are truly the purpose of life. Hmm. And being expressions of the divine all of that knowledge, all of that wisdom about play is right within each of us. And what I know this week is that each of us is remembering to play more, to pause, to laugh more, to be the laughter in the rain for someone who's going through a hard time, to just recognize all of the benefits of laughter, of joy. Hmm. <laughs> I am so grateful to have this opportunity to talk about playing, to know that you have joined us in this adventure through playing and that laughter is filling your heart and allowing you to relieve stress and to feel more creative. And it's from all that gratitude that I release this into the law, into that divine that always says yes. Knowing that it's already done, knowing that my words have been heard and answered. And so I can just say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is. I am so grateful for all of you that continue to provide us with your tithes through money, through your talents and treasures. And we are continuing to look for a place to have services. You will be the first to know. And I just want to thank you for the opportunity for us to be able to have the finances to be able to do that. So thanks again for all your contributions. Enjoy our offertory song. From the love of
Your spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal, bless, and prosper. It does good work in the world and returns to me. Multiply it abundantly. From the love of your spirit, find all of the information for donating at our website at cslsoutheastla.org. You can use the donate button there or you can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 1-225-320-5100. Or you can mail your donation to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Reverend Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations, and we appreciate the fact that you are giving gifts that are flowing out to everyone we touch. Children play and we see them in that feeling of feeling so grateful to be alive. And that's what this song of Gary's reminds me of. It's called, I'm So Grateful, I'm Alive. It's been great being with you again this morning. I'll see you next time. Till that time, sing this with me. It's a song I wrote with my buddy, Jamie Lula. It's easy. Sing this part. I'm so grateful I'm alive. 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 We'll come back to that part. That's your part. Sunshine, your eyes do drops and dragonflies. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. Sing with me. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful. So grateful
so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. Sing it with me. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. Keep it going. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. continues with health and healing. We all have something we'd like to heal, and I know that we like to keep our bodies fine-tuned as much as we can so that we feel healthy and we feel better when we do that. So come see how health and healing are important in your spirituality, how our soul is colored by our thoughts about healing and health, and how healing attitudes can actually change our lives. I hope you'll join us as we continue on this journey to enlightenment by looking at how we can chop wood and carry water as we heal and enjoy good health. Thank you for joining us today. I invite you to like us on Facebook at Center for Spiritual Living, Southeast Louisiana. And please follow us on our YouTube channel at C-S-L-S-E-L-A. And it's just about time to join in our community time, which is a live discussion that follows the service every Sunday at 1145 a.m. You have a little bit of time to go get a cup of coffee or some tea and then dial into our conference line. The number is 540-792-0192. And the participation code is 475-220. We hope you'll join us. So in closing, remember that Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth, but we at the Center for Spiritual Living absolutely know we're the most joyful. So until we meet again, may you be wrapped in the arms of loving kindness, and may you see reminders all the time to laugh and play, remembering that the purpose of life is joy. Because what I know is when we step fully into joy and we see the world through the eyes of laughter and love, we feel very much alive. Yeah, my spirit is alive.